So this discussion is about the great escape. This is how Kimberly Clark used virtual escape rooms to create safer remote environments. I'm Dana Barca. I'm the Senior Cybersecurity Awareness Program Lead for Kimberly Clark. We do run our program under a branded name called Protect KC and Me, which is recognizable to our employees. So let's go back to March 13th. That's the fateful day that many of us remember. That was the last day anyone was allowed in any of our North America locations. We have about 55,000 users globally. And that means on Friday, when we closed shop, everything was business as usual. And by Monday, we had to make sure all of those users globally were able to log in remotely. That, and because it was due to COVID-19, we were suddenly tasked with teaching employees how to avoid COVID-19 scams and teaching them how to work remotely and use VPNs. We, were, we had to develop best practices document to avoid Zoom bombings. You guys remember that? Um, and we also launched our phishing drill program in March. And it, we also had to make sure people knew how to report incidents who had never had to do it before. These are a couple of clips from some of the internal virtual locations we created to help guide people. Um, some of the people from the SANS team might recognize these videos. SANS made videos available to people about securing your work from home environment. And we wove those into our SharePoint page to help educate users. So we had a destination site to get people up to speed on remote work. We also did something new. We usually don't communicate when uh, a fish is effective in our organization, we do warn against it and we do all the training and drills and such, but we don't show them. We th we threw back the veil and we showed people exactly which scam emails were coming in and also told them what to look for and how to avoid those scams, as well as a host of documents that we created in support of that. Now, the other part of that is yes, just like every other cybersecurity team, we were inundated with requests on work from home environments. Well, our business is to provide essentials. So Kimberly Clark is the powerhouse behind brands like Cottonelle toilet paper, Scott paper towels, Huggies diapers, Kotex tampons, all those essentials that were flying off the shelves. So while our cybersecurity team is scrambling to make sure employees can work remotely, our mills were at maximum capacity to try to get creative and get our products into the stores faster than ever before. This means we had to use our information technology resources to bypass the old way of doing things like sending products to distribution centers six months ahead of time. Now they were going direct to store. It was an entirely different process. And just like everyone else, we were entirely surprised that toilet paper became an essential commodity during that time. And so we had to do a lot of things differently and it impacted the cybersecurity team just as much as all the others. Now, the new challenge became, as most security awareness people recognize, you are usually trying to push your information out, um, trying to get people to listen to you, waving your arms in the air, trying to say, hey, this is what you need to know in order to work securely. They flipped the script on us. All of a sudden, there was insatiable demand for cybersecurity knowledge and resources. And don't forget, people weren't just worried about their work security. Suddenly, their children had laptops from school at home or they were using their parents laptops and people wanted to know how do I keep my family safe as well so that became very important so COVID-19 kind of became a oh, went too far COVID-19 became a bridge for our organization on the left here this is the typical parts of our program we do have an annual mandatory cybersecurity training uh, initiative for people who work in offices. We had phishing drills. We have social media interaction internally through our Yammer pages. We have annual events with Cyber Cybersecurity Awareness Month, and we do have a strong online presence. Just because we've had a program for about five years at Kimberly Clark now, so it's pretty mature. But now the the questions that came in were, what are the one-on-one -on -one interactions that people can have with the cybersecurity awareness team? Are there games and contests we can engage in that maybe aren't part of formalized reporting, but at least help us learn in an easy way? How can we engage more with employees day to day? And managers were asking, what kind of team building opportunities do you have available for us? Some teams had never met before. We relaunched our mask development division. And so they were all new people. They, they, can, they only knew each other virtually. So, and people also wanted preparedness exercises. So these were new challenges that we had to address. And so we, we thought about it. We looked at our strategy for the year and we came up with two new ideas. One of those 
was a virtual escape room. It's called Cyber Escape Online. It's remote, and because of the size and scale of our pro of our program and the in the small size of our team, there are only two dedicated awareness people on our team. We did use a vendor called Living Security to to develop our program, but that's not um, that doesn't make it much easier. You still have to take a few weeks to get people to learn how to facilitate and to see if the timing is correct. We had to play with the timing of the game a little bit. We had to customize our questions to make sure we were getting our specific policies and ways of doing business in there. Um, and we'll go more into that in just a little bit. We also decided to launch a Cyber Jeopardy game, which was fully customized with all KC questions. And we use the game agency for that tool. There are ways to develop these tools internally without using vendors, but I, I suggest for large enterprises, you do use a vendor because it can be pretty taxing. So how did we roll this out? The measured rollout was critical to success. Of course, we started with our cybersecurity team. They were our guinea pigs because they're, you know, they're friendly and they're family. I don't think any teams passed the, the early game, so that was fun. But once we got our facilitators up to speed, we rolled it out directly to technology leadership. We did not start with our general users. We got onto, onto their um, agendas for their regular meetings and made them go through the, through the process and they absolutely loved it. And they became our champions and started getting it out to broader, broader information security teams. Then when Cybersecurity Awareness Month came around, we used that as a promotional platform because we already had it. Everyone expects every October that cybersecurity is gonna be front and center. So we opened up 17 rooms that anyone could sign up for and they were full. After Cybersecurity Awareness Month, it took off even more and now it's a regular part of our of our security awareness program. So how did we get the word out? We created some, some ways. We, we decided that of the 17 escape room experiences that were scheduled for October, the team that came in at the top of the leaderboard were going to get prizes. And let me tell you, when you tell your teams that they're going to get prizes or that their, their name is going to be on a leaderboard, they get super competitive. Um, so we had people really trying to, to get to the top and, and even getting um, other teams to join in on the fun. So we used um, our, our SharePoint landing page as well as Yammer to get the word out more and more. We filled up those rooms in October. So what were the results? Well, we did train five facilitators in three different countries. We had to divide and conquer just because of time zone differences, language differences and stuff like that. We scheduled 72 escape rooms since we launched in September. 53 of those are complete and they're coming in new every day. We have hosted 322 players, average about six per escape room and up to 12 eligible per room. And as you can see, one of our research scientists said she thinks it's amazing we set this up. It allowed for a fun and meaningful team building in a completely remote environment. And that's the kind of results we want in our program. Thank you very much, Lance.